How we doing? Yeah, uh, everything is good. How are you? Everything is good here. So, thank you. Firstly, I want to thank you for accepting my invitation and accepting to talk with me. Yes, sir. So, I thought to introduce you to my audience. <laughs> so, do you have any idea who I am? I think I have one download in India. <laughs> okay. Maybe that'll change. But hey, thanks to that one bastard who did. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're from? I am from, uh, I'm coming out of Indianapolis, Indiana now. But I've okay. lived in lots of places, you know, within America. Okay, so can you tell me about your podcast to my audience? Yes, we're called Partners in Crime. It's partners with a hyphenated N in crime. And what we do is uh, we tell stories of the uh, legendary gangsters. So far, we've just stuck to the basically the American New York area, but we'll eventually get all around the world. And uh, basically, like that's what we do. We read the story. We research it for about a week, two weeks. Uh, lay it out, and uh, my buddy Zach, he uh, reads it out, the storyline, and I'll do the commentary, add the color to it. And our other buddy, Brett Sexton, he's kind of a film aficionado. He kind of puts that spin on it. And uh, Joshua, the intern, the young guy who does all the engineering and stuff, he throws his two cents in a little bit, too. Are you the only host? Pardon? Are you the only host? Do you have partners? I have partners, yes. yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's four of us all together. Okay, so what actually made you to uh, think about the rebels and uh, talk about the rebels? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, just one day I said, man, I'm going to do a podcast about gangsters. And uh, I got my girl that buys things for me. I gave her a list of equipment I wanted. She started getting it down to the best prices and stuff. And uh, I was actually going to do it with a good friend of mine, like a childhood friend, but uh, he had some issues and stuff, could never quite get on board. So uh, I met, I know Zach, he's, I know Zach. So he, uh, he does podcasts and sports broadcasting and stuff. So he actually knows a lot more about it than I did. And uh, he jumped on board right away and he hooked me up with Brett, the other guy. And uh, so they're, they're young, like, you know, they're more professional. They got me to talk into the microphone and all the, uh, all the stupid things I was doing wrong. I get excited. I get away from the microphone, things like that. So in hindsight, I'm glad they're on board. But uh, I don't know. It just hit me. came to me in a vision, you know? And uh, I really feel like the gangster stories aren't just uh, stories about crime, but they're part of the American story, at least, a big part of it. And uh, I kind of consider it like a history lesson that a lot of people, they don't know. So only uh, uh, American uh, gangsters or uh, all the gangsters uh, from uh, other, pla no, other other parts of the world too? It exaggerated. Like, why don't you do Sicily? Why don't you do Canada? Why don't you do... Yeah, yeah I will. I figure maybe season one is New York and I'll, and I'll branch out. But the thing people have to realize is like, if I want to do gangster stories in India, that's going to require a lot of research because it's not in my head like it is the New York gangsters, I grew up with this stuff, you know, but I will do it. I will do it. But I'm going to need some help and some better researchers to, to branch out and do it right, like I want to do it. How many episodes you did? Uh, I'm working on my 10th, which is going to be Paul Castellano. Okay, so when you started it? When, when you started your podcast? Yeah, uh, Just a few months ago. Really, you figure we've done one every two weeks, so just just started. You know, it was maybe I want to say March. We really jumped in. Okay, so do you think in the on a criminal perspective when you are explaining about the 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 crime? Do I think about what? Uh, will you think about the criminal's uh, perspective? I mean, why why that uh, person uh, decided yeah. to do that crime? Yeah, yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, we're talking about crime sometimes that happened in the 20s and 30s. And uh, there's a lot of characters in this and a lot of things happen. And uh, the documentation on a lot of it is in the America, the code of silence. So a lot of times you're having to pick through and figure out what makes sense. Like even as far as how a murder went down, the, the story that you normally get sometimes doesn't make any sense, you know. And uh, I feel like I'm a... Obviously, I'm not a super criminal, but I have a, a decent mind for the 
for the life, and I think I can do that. What else I have is, uh, especially since I started this, what I didn't expect is just an outpouring of private messages I get. I get uh, photographs that I would have never gotten if I had started this show, and people have inside stories. We just did Roy DeMeo in the Murder Machine, which was a group of guys that were killing people and chopping them up in the back of a bar. And uh, I get a text message from a kid who lived a block away and used to ride his bike over there and get a glass of water every day. And uh, I'll be sharing that on the next one. But uh, uh, Orlando Spato called me, right? So I, I did a show on Orlando Spato. He's the accidental gangster, a Hollywood fixer, who knew all the greats growing up. And I actually spent two and a half hours on a, on a phone call with him. So okay. I get a lot of perspectives. And if I'm really unclear about something, I got a few people that I trust and I reach out to and get their best take on what they think happened. Sometimes they know firsthand. Sometimes they'll tell me what they've always heard. But it gives me a lot of perspective. Have you got any calls or messages from gangsters? Yes. You got I get a lot of uh, messages and a few calls. And like I said, Orlando Spada was the Hollywood godfather. And uh, I talk to him now semi-regularly. I, I, I can text him right now and ask him anything I want. He's a great guy. Threatening calls? Pardon? Threatening calls? I can't understand you, sorry. sorry. Uh, threatening calls? Yes. Yes. Okay. So how do you <laughs> feel when you get uh, this kind of response? Um, I feel good. You know, I feel validated that what we're doing is on the right track. Uh, so many times you do something on social media and everybody just shits on you, you know? And uh, I was surprised that right off the bat, everybody was really like, hey, love the show, like it. Everybody wanted to help. Everybody was like, do a great job. Uh, a couple guys told me, don't screw it up. <laughs> like, you got it going on. Don't screw this up like everybody does. And uh, But, you know, I, I felt like, like I said, I don't know why I started doing it, but it seems like the right thing. And everybody seems to be behind me at this point anyway. So studying all the gangsters, uh, can I say that uh, you're going to become a gangster one day? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> so it's just a funny question. So how do you feel when you uh, study these gangsters and their stories? The main thing is I, I want it to be a good story, right? And that's what I'm starting to look for. When I get in there, I'm like, is there enough meat to the story that I'm going to be able to tell you a story? And is it going to be something you're going to want to listen to? And uh, I guess my first inclination was like, if it didn't have a lot of violence, if they weren't brutal, if they weren't killed, or maybe if they didn't get gunned down at the end of the story, people wouldn't like it. And uh, gratefully, I found that to not be the case. I can do stories about gangsters that never killed anybody. You know, and just how they came up in it and how they made their money. And people seem interested in the whole package, not just where they gunned down, you know, which are great stories, too. You know, when you get into the violence of the criminals, I think a lot of that's our, our lore to them. But there's so much more than that. But what I really look for is like, you know, my shows are over an hour. I'm like, are you going to sit there in your car and listen to me for an hour? Or are you going to get bored and turn turn it, you know, listen to a Bigfoot podcast or something? So that's mainly what I'm looking for. Is can I keep you engaged? So, that's the story. Okay. So, what do you think uh, uh, that why these uh, gangs, why these people uh, are going against the present rule and uh, not satisfied with the rule and going against to the law? Why? Originally, you figure when you came to America, like I, you know, I'm of Italian descent. Uh, we come in. We're looking for this new life and what we got was like hey you could sweat it out in a factory and die a young man and uh and it's not just italians it happened to the irish it happened to the jewish people it happened to everybody that comes in um there's no opportunity and stuff and kids growing up they see violence in the streets they they grew up in hard times and then they'll see that there's people that have a better life and unfortunately this was uh, an opportunity for a better life brought on by prohibition when they uh mistakenly tried to outlaw alcohol in America, they created this enormous opportunity, you know, for people to commit crimes, to sneak booze in and make a ton of money. And all of a sudden you got a guy who was, A, poor from where he came from, comes here and he's poor. He wants to wear the nice suits and have the good life. 
You know what I mean? And uh, then I guess Darwinism kicked in and the most ruthless people rise to the top. But uh, I also point out that the culture in America is very changed now. The gangster life isn't what it was in the 30s and 40s. It's a hard way to go. Our feds are all over everybody. And, uh, if you want to be a gangster nowadays, good luck. You're going to end up dead or you're going to end up in jail. And probably in jail. So... Have you, uh, will you, will you study about the gangsters family? Yeah, the five families. Yeah, their, their families. And will you tell that to the audience, to your listeners about their families too? Uh, if you're talking about their immediate families, like their real brothers, sisters, things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not, not too much. I try to focus on the players in the story. If the family's relevant, like it's sometimes like, um, Vito Genovese, his wife, you know, turned into a rat and betrayed him and testified in court, things like that. That would be relevant. But I think if there's a family member that lived a stray life and stuff, I don't need to throw them out to the world. And uh, a lot of times I hold back names. I know addresses where people live. I don't put that stuff in. You know what I mean? I try to keep you entertained with the story. And I don't, I don't want to dox anybody or bring anybody into the story that, that was never a part of the story. I try not to do that. So how much time you take uh, to study? I'd say two weeks most. You know what I mean? It depends on who they are. Sometimes it's real easy. Sometimes it's not so easy. Um, sometimes you got to drop it because you just can't get enough. Like if they're a really good gangster, you can't find much. <laughs> you know, there's guys that they tell me about and they're like, this guy's a huge boss. He was pulling the strings. You know, I can't find anything. So there's no story. And they're damn sure not going to get it to me. You know, so you got to drop it. But, I, you know, every two weeks, I try to get it out. You know, sometimes I can do it every week, but it's a lot of work. So who is your favorite gangster? Lucky Luciano. Okay. You know, I think he was the visionary on, on many levels. You know, he, he, he took it from street gangs to uh, the big business. He ran it like a business. He also was the, the first guy that saw a vision like, hey, it doesn't have to be just a Sicilian. You know, we got to cooperate with the Irish. We got to cooperate with the Jews. We got to, he was kind of the uh, anti-racist of the Sicilian movement, you know, and uh, to the point that he finally realized that he had to kill everybody that was a racist to get things moving forward. And uh, he called them the mustache peak, you know, but he had a vision for what organized crime could be with the minimal amount of violence, with the minimal amount of uh, police intervention, you know, like police, he involved in it too. And I think he was, uh, if you got to have a favorite gangster, you know, not that he was a great humanitarian, but I think he was the visionary and will always be like one of the, one of the greats. Do you have empathy? Pardon? Empathy on gangsters? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. You know, I have gang, you know, I have empathy for some gangsters. Sometimes I think they had a rough life, a rough deal, you know. Sometimes, like a guy like Carmen Delaney, which is my first episode, none. He's a piece of garbage. He always was. I think he had almost no soul. You know, he was a jerk from the ground up. And uh, no, no empathy for him whatsoever. I think he got what he had coming. So, how how is the response for all the episodes that you have released? So far, pretty good. You know, pretty good. Yeah, we got a. You know, we're not the most popular podcast out there. I don't know if we ever will be. But uh, if you're into gangsters, you know, right now, that response is really good. What I've tried to do is bring people that aren't in, you know, because it's not just like a bunch of stupid Italian guys shooting each other. There's a hell of a lot more to it. There's interesting stories. And you'd be surprised the influence they have on the world. It's like, you know, we, we read about historical figures, but we tend to leave these guys out. Like even in war efforts, efforts and things like that they're a part of politics and no matter where you are and i think that uh we all could learn a lesson from these people and the contribution or sometimes just the parasitic qualities they've had on uh society are you good in explaining the story i like to think i am <laughs> i guess we all like to think so, so. i've had i've had feedback to that effect yes they say I'm good at explaining it. Okay. So, so why only podcast? Why you decided to use only your vocal cord? Uh, 
Uh, well, for one thing, I'm not much to look at. <laughs> I have a radio face. But uh, right now, I guess it was just simpler. And uh, I edit the hell out of my shows. Um, I don't know if you can tell now, but I have a rough way of speaking. So a lot of times, like, we'll record for three hours. And uh, maybe an hour and a half is what I say. I'm like, I don't, I don't want that out there. You know what I mean? I, I don't... I don't speak well sometimes. Sometimes I use rough language I wish I wouldn't use. Sometimes I just say mean things that I, I, I wouldn't say, you know. So I edit the hell out of it, and I like to control what I put out there, you know. Or sometimes, yeah, that's the best way to say it. Sometimes I say shit I shouldn't have said. <laughs> so I would never do anything live or anything like that until I get a lot more self-control and professionalism in my game. Oh, you, you, you edit your own stuff? Yes, yes. Okay. And that's about, I want to say, six to eight hours of editing. Okay. So, yeah. so when yeah. you hear our story, you know, there's like dramatic music, there's sound effects, there's gunshots, there's a, if somebody gets strangled, there's the effects in the background of somebody getting strangled. And sometimes it's dramatic, and sometimes we overdo it just to be kind of funny about it. There's a lot of dark humor to the story. You know, we don't take it too seriously. So we, uh, If you listen, we throw a lot of dark humor and stuff in that uh, hopefully people get. And we put in more and more as the show goes on. The first time I made jokes, even even Zach and Brett were looking at me like, what the hell? You know, and uh, they didn't get my sense of humor at first. So uh, people recommended, they're like, you know what, why don't you put that in your back pocket for a while to come out slowly. Don't don't let people know how you are right off the bat. And I think it's worked. It slowly comes out. Now when I say something funny, people know I'm joking. They know I'm not serious. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of throw that in more and more as the show goes on. I try not to uh, overdo it, <laughs> you know. But, yeah, it's we try to keep it light and funny and uh, entertaining, like I said. So there's a, a hell of a lot of uh, post-production work that makes it a better show. So even if you if you study Indian gangsters, you know you will you will i mean you will get a lot of information about the gangsters and their stories there are a lot of gangsters yeah. uh, before in india i don't know whether they are there right now yeah yeah i i prefer to do stories about people that are dead because <laughs> it's not a day you know what i mean whenever we get into someone that's alive i'm like man you know i don't, don't want to be railing against someone that's alive Last thing I want is a beef with a uh, with a gangster. <laughs> not what I'm about. You know what I mean? Even that's, even that's funny. I'm not trying to get the person with shit going. Even if you take uh, the stories of uh, the dead gangsters, uh, there will be people who are connected with them, and uh, they may they may you will have threats from them too. Yeah, and I don't get threatened. I get I get um, corrected sometimes. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm open to the conversation. If they say I screwed up, then we'll talk about it and why why I said what I said, why I think what I think. And uh, if anybody ever changes my mind, it hasn't happened yet, then I'll go on the next show and say I changed my mind. I got it wrong, you know? But okay. uh, so far, it doesn't happen. People, eh, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't stare that easy, <laughs> you know? Okay. But uh, people, you know, people have strong uh, opinions sometimes, but, uh, Usually I can uh, work it out and we end up drinking. So if they call you and if they wanted uh, the episode to be removed or deleted, will you do that? Oh, no, no, of course not. No. But like I said, I did it with Orlando Spado. And uh, the agreement I had was I did the show. And there was a lot of post-editing and stuff. So I said, I'm going to do the show. I'm going to send it to you. If there's anything you don't like for any reason, it's out. And I'll do that, you know. And I said, you don't even need a reason. You just tell me you want that out, and it's out. So, you know, I gave him that consent. And uh, okay. he, I said it to him, and he almost immediately called me back and said, it's great, put it out, you know. And uh, like I said, I, I feel like I knew when he was telling me something as a man and when he was telling me something for the story as, as a professional story, you know what I mean? If he said something on the side about somebody or something, and I'm like, you know, that was more to me than to you. The viewer then i left it out anyway you know i try to i try to do it right so you will tell to will you will tell the story in such a way that uh, 
uh, uh, nobody gets uh, offended. I can't say nobody. It's, it's social media. Somebody's always going to get offended. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to say something that's deliberately untrue. No, I'm not going to say something that hurts people that that don't need to be hurt. You know what I mean? I'm not going to do that. My my whole thing is we're going to tell a story. We're going to tell the legend, the best story I can of what this thing is. I'm going to have fun, you're going to have fun, and nobody gets it. I mean, except the people that die in the story, you know, obviously they get it. But, uh, yeah, like I said, I'm not out, I'm not out from the state. I'm telling some funny, good, cool stories. That's all. So you are saying that every ex expression has consequence, and uh, you are ready for the consequence. If you want to say that. <laughs> nice. I don't think I have it coming any more than we all have it come. I say that. Nice. So, what is your when when your next episode is going to release? The next one's going to come out uh, probably not uh, this Monday, but the next Monday, and it's Paul Castellano. We're kind of piggybacking off a previous story about the Road of Mail crew, and obviously, uh, Paul Castellano was gunned down at a restaurant. He was the head of the uh, Gambino crime family. He succeeded Carlo Gambino. And we're, we're going to cover his story because we've already laid the groundwork for it. And uh, what happens after that, who knows? So do you have uh, anything to say to my audience and to the people who watches this video from anywhere on this planet about your podcast and uh, about your upcoming projects? Yeah, I'd say... Uh, you know, I know it's probably not most people's thing because it's American gangsters right now, but uh, check it out. It's good stories. I think you'll have a fun time, and uh, I think you'll find it interesting. I think you'll laugh with us, and uh, if you give us a shot, I think you'll be a fan. If you listen to me this far, then you've uh, you've survived the sound of my voice. So hey, you're halfway in. Where they can find you? Where where they can find your podcast? Oh, you can find it really anywhere, Spotify, uh, wherever you find your podcast. Or you could go directly to my uh, website. They're listed there at www.partners-n-crime.com. They're there. You can just download them directly. But uh, if you just, you can find me on Instagram. The links are in there. You know, Partners in Crime Podcast, like you found me. And, uh, yeah, we're easy to find. You'll see so have you seen any videos of mine my previous videos yeah i just checked them out because uh before i got on uh, my daughter i told her i was thinking about doing this she goes make sure he's not a jerk <laughs> so i was like okay so i went on and uh, checked them out uh, obviously i didn't have a lot of time because they would you call me this morning but yeah i checked them out it seemed interesting it seemed like you're doing some good stuff and you seem like a good guy you know i hope you have a lot of success yeah you said that so thank you <laughs> so can i put this video on my youtube channel on my social accounts and on internet with your permission of course it's all you man. yeah Here's you. yeah thank you thank you so much for giving your valuable time and uh, telling about your podcast and uh, telling uh, giving answers for my questions i appreciate it hey thanks for your time my friend yeah. Have a Thank great you. day. Yeah, keep going. Keep uh, telling the crime stories to the world. I'll do what I can. Thanks, man. Yeah, take care. All right, man. Have a great day. Yeah, you too.